Okay, I'm talking to um, the two members from the group Virtu, Mr. Lenny White and Mr. Cindy Clark. Welcome uh, in our program. Uh, my first question is, where did the name Virtu come from? Well, actually, Lenny thought of the name. Uh, we, you know, we we initially tried to come up with a word that, uh, or some phrase or word that sort of described what we were trying to do. We were trying to, uh, you know, have a word that had the, the uh, virtuosity in there because the music that we that we were attempting to do and that I feel that we did do eventually on record was uh, some music that had virtuosity in it a little bit different than some of the stuff that we were doing before music a little more complex and uh, difficult to play so Lenny called me one night and came up with this word uh, that you found where'd you find this well, word actually, actually what happened is in our meeting um, with the record company um, we were talking about um, having virtuosity in the music. So I, I said, man, we should just call the band Virtue. And uh, Michael Kaplan said, yeah, that's great, that's great. So I did a search on it, but I found out there was another band already that had it. To actually, we, didn't we almost get sued? Yeah. Somebody, you know? Yeah, someone actually, they sent a, they took the, the, t the time to hire a lawyer, a big lawyer, and they and they and they sent the, you know a big formal threatening letter, the whole bit. And what was really dumb was that the lawyer or the artist they they never really looked <laughs> at the press release close <laughs> to see that it was spelled completely different from the word virtue. So they ah, they probably wasted about five thousand right. dollars there. See, because the, because be, that very fact. I went and I went to a thesaurus and I looked up the word virtue to try to find out different ways of spelling it or some words that were synonymous with that. And virtue was one of the words that came under mm -hmm. uh, the, that title. And what it is, it's a, um, a deep appreciation for fine art. And we figured that what we were doing again would be fine art and we'd have a deep appreciation for what it is that we did. Kind of worked perfect for us. Now, now that we talk about the, the content of, uh, of her too, how would, you, how would you describe the project? How would you place it um, placed against, for instance, other projects that you have done? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's as far as, this, you know, the sequence of events as far as what we've done in our lives. I think it was actually kind of a, an obvious thing to do, especially for me and Lenny to do, to get back together, because you know we spent a lot of time in a, a quote-unquote jazz rock fusion band, Return Forever. And then, of course, Lenny went his way and I went my way. And, uh, and we, we sort of, there was a few points in time where we got back together and did things, but nothing really serious, you know. Uh, and this band here, uh, you know, was, was very serious because we got together, we got signed to a record deal, a record company, I mean, and, and uh, we wrote music together. So it was only obvious that, that, the, that the music was going to have things from the past, some things that we were thinking about in the future. And, and it's, you know, we were one half of Return to Forever, I think the big half. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, so it's only natural that, you know, I hear people compare Virtue to Return to Forever, and it's only natural because, you know, we were both composers in that band, and uh, it's only natural. I mean, we, it's, 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 really, it's really more of a continuation for us, you know. It's not that we're really making a big step to do anything uh, that's really, like, groundbreaking or different. It's just sort of... You know, me and Lenny haven't been together for a long time, so we're back together, and this is what we do. And so here it is. And yet, it's like <laughs> there are um, points of an artist's creative process where, like, if he's not bound by what he's in at the same at the point that he's in, I mean, whatever he's doing at the, at that point in time, some artists they just write whatever kind of music they want to write. And Stanley and I have done that. I mean, so there was music that had been written or that was thought about that had no outlet. 
and so now there's an outlet for it. It's not that, you know, because he's a film composer, he just writes for films and that's it. Mm. He's constantly doing it. Oh, I write music for an R&B project or whatever I'm doing, that that's it. You know, you're constantly composing and writing music or thinking about music that, you know, covers a wide variety of musical styles. This happens to be one of them. And so now there's an outlet for this creative process to come out and this music to come out again. You, uh, you mentioned your work uh, with Return From Forever. Um, the, the whole concept of, of fusion has uh, achieved a, a whole new status. As you, if you look at the festival, you see so many styles here. Mm -hmm. uh, it has opened up to certain types of rock, especially a lot of world music is entering. Mm -hmm. How do you see your music, which is, as you described, a continuation, how do you place it in that vast area of styles that are presented here? Well, personally for me, uh, you know, he and I have lived in the latter part of the 20th century for the past 40 years. <laughs> and you, we've been influenced by all the different kinds of musics that have happened since 1950 to now. And I think that our music is a combination of all of these different types of things. What's unique about it is that in our band we have three generations of musicians and the instrumentation is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, it's not different than what was the norm back in the so-called quote-unquote fusion movement. But, you know, we have someone who is 29 years old and played with Poison. We have someone who is 30-something years old and played with Yanni. And you have us. And you know, that, that is a quite a wide variety. And it encompasses all the different types of musics yeah. that you talked about. And you know, all the experiences that he's had, you know. So our music fits within all of that. And what, what Lenny described, how would you place that with the term jazz today? Well, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you really get serious about the term jazz, you, you'd probably would have to come up, you'd have to, you finally get to a point where you'd say that it's a really, it's an undefined word. You know, there's no finite like jazz is. I mean, the only th common thing I think, uh, you know, the one thing that you could say that's similar, that strings through all the music that come under the heading of jazz is that it's music that's where there's improvisation, people play solos over changes or not over changes or something, and, and I mean that's really the only thing. I mean, when you when you go back, I mean it's so funny in in uh, America today, you know, they have these jazz stations called smooth jazz radio. And I mean they'll play like a, you know Hall and Oates, <laughs> <laughs> smooth jazz, or go, and then followed by you know Luther Vandross or something, yeah. and then maybe they'll play a Lenny White. You know, so you know jazz today is uh, I, I don't know. I think in America, like the jazz is like something that's. I think they it's even a little broader than improvisational music. I think it's something that's like not like hit music or something. Just something that feels relaxed or something and it's you know it doesn't make you think of MTV or something and they call that jazz I mean it's it's you know now as far as where we fall into that I mean we fall into it I mean we've been there I mean Lenny Lenny uh, sort of touched on this a little bit that you know m me and Lenny were fortunate enough to sort of live at a time and actually help create a, a movement there was really only a handful of us maybe there was yeah. 20, 21 individuals that were maybe maybe a little more, you know, that that were in, in, a, in a handful of groups that created what's called uh, jazz fusion or jazz rock, whatever they called it back then. So we were very fortunate to create that, and we've watched it sort of come and go, and we watched the the residue, what that <laughs> did, <laughs> and how that affected people and 
and we see it popping up again. I mean, and uh, here we are again. And uh, you know, we've been very fortunate. It's 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 it's, it's a very uh, unique thing, I think, to be a part of something that uh, people consider groundbreaking. You know, it's a it's a. I think it's. Uh, I feel very honored to have a special place in history. Even though when Jazz Fusion first came out, it was like you know everyone. Yeah. You know, a lot of the Puritans, the jazz critics, you know, yeah, what is that, you know? But it happened with a lot of previous but styles of jazz as like, well. Yeah, you know, and there's a great book uh, that I got, uh, the name escapes me right now, but it has all the famous, like, uh, reviews of all the, the artists, you know, like, uh, there was one in particular, uh, was, you know, Stravinsky's uh, Rite of Spring, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, they thought it was like, I thought they were going to put him in jail or something, you know, for writing that thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they you had know, rights. They you know, so, the so it's 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 just a cool thing. I, I really feel proud to be part of the jazz fusion mu movement. And one thing that Vert Vertu does is that it, it really legitimizes the music. It is a music. It is a particular. There are rules. There's a particular way to play that music. You just don't get a guitar and turn it up to eleven, and then now you're a jazz fusion player. It's a particular thing. It's, type of way you write for an electric guitar that's loud or electric bass and you have a four piece or a five piece or whatever and there's a there's a thing it's really it is a legitimate form of jazz music so that's that's one thing I like about it my last question is you're both uh, ambassadors and to a lot of people role models I would say for your for your instrument how would you describe your daily relationship with your instrument I jog with my bass every <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, the wrong know. person to ask about that. <laughs> I lift weights with it every day. My acoustic bass. <laughs> you know, I think that um, once you get to a particular point um, with your instrument, I mean, like if you've been playing for many years, as we both have, um, when you are given an opportunity to play live, that's when you really get in touch with the instrument and how your instrument relates, I mean, how you relate your instrument to the audience. Just for me personally, um, there's no daily regiment that I do where I go and sit down in front of my drum set and, I, you know, I, maybe I should do that more, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But for me, I'm constantly trying, now that there's, there's this, uh, uh, um, outlet. I'm constantly trying to find more musical ways to uh, to get my music across to the individuals in the band and then my instrument comes after that. So I'm constantly trying to write some music for the band as opposed to me practicing my instrument. I, maybe I should practice it more. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's writing films all the time so like, you know, He's right. I mean, you know, when you compose music a lot, I mean, you really, and if you're a band leader, you know, you, you do have to put things in perspective. And, you know, they really can't take the place, you know, it, it's really like one, one thing is first, one thing is second, one thing is third. You know, and if you're a band leader, usually, if, if you're a good band leader, that's usually first, you know. And then as, if, if you're a composer, that's second, and then your instrument is third. You know, if you're like a side man in a band, you know, you could come in and, uh, you know, your instrument as a musician, you're there and that's it, you know. Uh, you know, in our case, I, I think, you know, we, especially when we were putting this together, we were really like into being band leaders, you know, and, and, uh, and then definitely composers. I mean, we really, it took us some time to put this stuff together. That was one of the main <laughs> points, one of the contentions <clears throat> band members is that we didn't play all through the music enough. <laughs> well, I want to play through the tune. Let's play through the tune. No, we have to get this section right. We have to get this right. <clears throat> and, you know, so as band leaders and as composers, we try to get the music to translate the best way that we can get it to translate. We have to get it from our heads to the other people in the band and then from them get it out to, the, to you know, everybody else. So. It's a process, and in that process, it is kind of tedious, 
you know, um, and the instrument is probably the last thing that we're trying to, you know, get across. I mean, but, you know, the thing is we've been playing for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for All your right. time. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.